What's going on, beautiful people? I am your host, Xavier Snow, checking in for Small Business Saturdays. How we doing? How we doing? Welcome, welcome, welcome to the live. Welcome to the live. How we doing today? Happy Saturday. This is Small Business Saturdays. Yes, we got a special, special, very, very special show in store from y'all. If y'all don't mind just dropping where you are located. Y'all see I got the world behind me. Where are y'all at? I'm in Washington, D.C. right now. My guest is about to join us very soon. I believe she's in Maryland, not too far. Where y'all joining from? Thank you for joining us. Small Business Saturdays. We about to get started. About to get started very soon. Y'all be patient. Let's go. Let's go. What's going on, beautiful people? Where y'all tuning in from? We got Texas on the map. Texas, what's going on, Texas? Y'all thawed out over there? <laughs> I know it's snowing pretty bad. Um, for those of y'all who don't know me personally, I'm the CEO of Black Affluence. I'm a digital marketer, social media expert. I help small businesses grow their business online. Um, if you are, if you have a business or you know someone that's looking to grow their business, make sure they reach out to me so I can help put them on the map. I can help them with their digital marketing, social media strategies, and all that jazz. So where y'all calling from? Where y'all calling from? Yes, come on in. We got a great show lined up. Make sure you let your people know. Got a show for you, Small Business Saturdays. If you have a small business, Drop your small business in the chat. We're trying to support all black-owned businesses, all 2021 and beyond. I personally have two businesses myself. This is Black Affluence, a platform dedicated to help black millennials learn financial literacy and entrepreneurship. Okay. You said y'all thawed out. I'm about to melt for the summer. Hey, man, that's global warming for you, bro. That's global warming for you, man. You... <laughs> You can't, I, man, it's going to be crazy in the next few years. I'm an environmental scientist, so I understand all the stuff that's going on. Okay, we got DC on the map. Lonnie Long, what's going on? Okay, we about to get this show on the road. Honeycomb Cosmetics has joined the party. We about to get it cracking. Yes, this is a great show. If you are black and you have a, a business or you just starting out, and you're wanting to make an impact, you're gonna wanna tune in. You're gonna wanna share this live because we have a very, very, very special guest today. And without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and add, get her tuning in real quick. Let's get it. Hello. Yo, yo, what's going on? Welcome, welcome. How you feeling? I'm feeling good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. I, I, I truly appreciate you sharing your wisdom and just being on this platform. Um, for those that may not know who you are, can you please just introduce yourself and what, what are some of the things you're doing in our community right now? Hello, my name is Liberty Cheney. I'm the CEO of Honeycomb Cosmetics, Black-owned. Black inspired, black empowered, all of that. Um, I'm also a woman of God. I love the Lord. <laughs> I'm a mother. I have four children. Um, one of my children is in college doing her thing. Um, and I also work for the National Institute of Health. So that's a little bit about me. Wow. So, I mean, you say a little bit, but <laughs> you over here being super mom, running a business, mm -hmm. working for NIH. I mean, come on, like that's you just you just round of applause right there, you know. <laughs> <laughs> All the moms and okay, if I'm not mistaken, you you do um, are you a pastor too? You you do? Yeah, I'm a pastor too. <laughs> Throw that in there on a on a list. Of, I just slid it in there. Just slid it in there. Yo, that's wonderful. Yes, wonderful. So we got so much to to unpack and talk about today um but i just want to get into your your brand story 
tell us a little bit about your business and how you got started. Okay, so Honeycomb Cosmetics, it was all started when I struggled with my own child's hair. Um, my child is 4C, all natural, and her hair was breaking off. It would not grow. Everyone kept looking at me like, what's going on with your child's head? Um, so I started getting into the lab and I started doing some research. I was buying everything. I was buying Cantu products, all kinds of stuff. I was really investing in my child, but I saw that it was not helping her and she was very sensitive with her scalp as well. So I started doing my own research. When I did the research, I found out that what I was putting in my child's head was causing a problem. I was putting these products in her head that actually had alcohol, which are not good for African-Americans. I don't care if you look at Cantu and they have a, a, a picture of some nut or berry, that stuff is not made for us. It has alcohol, it breaks our hair. Um, there's a lot of chemicals we need all natural. So right. I stopped putting that stuff in my child's hair. I started researching what was good for our skin, good for our hair, what they use in Africa to grow hair long and strong. And once I did that, I started getting in the lab. I got a stick blender. Um, I went and ordered a bunch of stuff, started blending things up. I started putting it in her hair and her hair started growing. Um, then I started, mm. it, started to put it in my hair. Then I was testing it on my family members and it actually started working, but it's all natural. Everything is blended by hand. The only thing in it that's not natural is a preservative. I put a preservative in it so it just doesn't mold or it doesn't rot, but everything is all natural. I have my products imported from Africa because I don't mm -hmm. trust anything over here. I want all natural. <laughs> yes. Wow. So I think um, there's something to unpack in that alone. I mean, the fact that as a just, is this your first business? Let me ask that. No, I actually have another business um, okay. in IT. I'm actually a cyber engineer, ethical hacker. So I work for myself. Um, in my own company for the NIH. So the NIH doesn't own me, yeah. I own me. And I sell my work and my expertise out to the NIH. And I have a couple other people that work for me as well. So this is just number two for me. I also have a publishing company called Aha the House. So I publish books as well. So everything that I learn, everything that I implement into my own life, I can put it in my own book and I can get paid for selling it. Come on, Black Queen, you better get Come that. I, I, I don't play. <laughs> The multiple streams. Let's get it. Uh, so I want to touch on something you said, because uh, I think a lot of business owners, they 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 overlook this part. But you you found a problem and you focused on finding a solution to that problem. Right. right? Mm -hmm. And and that ultimately is what allows you to have the success because you realize, hey, if I have this problem and I'm realizing that these products are not owned by black people and they're not helping us. By nature, this only right thing for me to do is figure out how to solve it. Right, so right. I just want to know, once you had that, once you figured out, okay, this is good, I like this, this works on my family, it works on me, what was then the next step that said, all right, I got to get this to the world or I got to make this into a business? How did you go about doing that? All right, and I, I want to address the woman that said on here that having healthy hair is not necessarily having long hair. Mm. I'm not saying that your hair has to be long, but in the African-American community, we have allowed ourselves to get fibroids, cysts, all kinds of stuff on our uteruses because we put these chemicals in our hair. We've permed our hair. But long hair, and if you want long hair, that's why you get long hair. hair I can get hair. I want to limit the ability. Oh, hold on. You're kind of I don't know, you're kind of buffering a little bit. I don't know if you can hear me. Let me see. It was doing so good. Technical difficulties, y'all. But as as y'all can tell, as you can tell, she's about her stuff, right? She is about her business. She's on it. She's working, grinding multiple streams, multiple impact. She's doing the thing. So She's going to join us in a second. She's going to rejoin connection issues. You know how it is when you go live, man. You don't never know what to expect. But 
Again, this is Small Business Saturdays. I'm your host, Xavier Snow. We got Liberty joining back in. Let me go ahead and add her right now. She should be coming in. Yeah. I'm back. <laughs> <laughs> but I just wanted to say, whatever you want for your hair is absolutely obtainable, and you don't have to limit it to what the world says black hair is supposed to be. We do grow our hair all the way to our butts. We do have edges. Come on, our stuff does curl up and wave up. I'm not limiting my Afro. My Afro could be anything I need it to be. My Afro is a crown. So what got me to the place of creating this and putting this into a place of a business for me? Well, I wanted to make some money. I'm like, come on, Cantu has been taking all of our money all of this time. I looked at some of the different labels from some of the hair products I found. I started researching the phone numbers on the bottom. I started looking up laws. I found out how to get things copyrighted. And I was like, wow, this doesn't take a lot. Once I found out how to do everything legally, I put the wheels in motion. I started giving my products to people who had chemotherapy. I started giving my products to people who, who struggled with their children. I started giving my products to people who um, had issues with their hair, people who had bald spots, not only women, I found men that had um, bald spots in their hair. I'm like, come on, let's test this. Let's try this. So that's what catapulted me into making it into my own business. Wow. Wow. And that, did I hear you correct? Did you say you were giving the products? I was giving the products. Okay. And talk about that. Talk about your decision because I know people hear free or that you've given it away and they think of that as an L. You taking an L. But can you talk about the mindset of that you kind of went through to to want to do that and the, to the benefit that came out of that? Well, honestly, I really wanted to see if it worked. Come on, <laughs> I, my hair. We got we have hair in my house, but I needed to try some individuals who might have had different situations with their hair so that I could test to see if the product really really worked. And then, of course, with the heart that I have, if someone had cancer, I'm like, man. I know you struggled. Let me help you out. Um, one thing I do want to say about Black-owned businesses, people always think that we have to give you everything for free. That's not how it is. Mm -hmm. I, I shop Black-owned. I'm paying the full amount and I'm giving you a tip because I want to see you make it. I mm -hmm. want to see it expanding past just me and you. I want to see it hit the world, the nation. So. Right, right. Okay, okay. So so let's let's talk a little bit more about the importance of black owned businesses because because I know that's where your heart is and I know that's extremely important to you. So um why do we need black businesses? Why are black businesses important and why should we continue to support black business black owned businesses? Honestly because black people are some of the most creative people in the earth. You know, we're very creative, we're very intuitive. Um, a lot of what you see around you has been created by a black person. So it's imperative that we continue to support those things so that the next generation will have the same ability to cultivate and to build. If you don't support black businesses, then black businesses go away. And then in the future, there's no one that's going to establish those things. So it's important that we support them so that they continue to flourish and they can continue to bloom. And also, we need to gainfully employ our own people. We learn mm -hmm. differently. <laughs> we, we, not only do we learn differently, but we show what we learn differently. We have a, another level of creativity. So we need to create these platforms and open these doors up for our own people. Um, you know, we get stuck on having Louis Vuitton, Chanel, Gucci, and all of that stuff, to me, that's very limited. I've seen some Black entrepreneurs with their own clothing line that <laughs> trumps that stuff, but we don't give them a chance. We don't give them an opportunity because we don't see value in ourselves. When you see value in yourself and you see some other Black skin, brown skin, come on, you're going to pour into them as well. Okay, okay. Um, another thing that was interesting, and, and first let me say that was a, that was a great point, right? We we really need to learn how to value ourselves. I mean, there's just so much depth into that, you know, with just stemming all the way back to slavery and how we view ourselves and the, the Jim Crow laws and all those things that are still in place today that affect how we think and communicate. So I definitely want to acknowledge that. 
Um, to just segue, you, you mentioned something previous, previously when we spoke on the phone about your day job, right? Mm -hmm. And how you are a cultural advisor or can, can you speak on that role and uh, what are some of the challenges that you have to face in that? Okay. So as I stated before, I work for the NIH. Um, I am the only female, the only black ethical hacker engineer. I'm the only one. Everyone mm -hmm. else around me does not look like me. They're all older white men with degrees and certifications that I don't need. <laughs> but they all look different from me. So they decided to put me into something called the Cultural Committee and they president. I don't get to make any decisions about anything. Literally, they have me as a face. They want me in photos. They want me in commercials. They'll have mm -hmm. me on the website. Um, we most recently unleashed some things for COVID-19. And of course, they had a picture of me with some of the information in reference to the COVID-19 because my skin is black. Wow. So but how did how, so I can you I can you I use it for my advantage though. I use it for okay. my advantage because it puts me into position to talk to people that I might not have had the ability to talk to before. Okay. That's interesting. Can you can you dive a little bit into that? What do you, what do you mean by that a little bit? Okay. Um for instance, right now we're going through a pandemic, right? Because I look the way that I look, because I'm a black woman, because they have put me in this position, I've had firsthand encounters with what's going on with the pandemic. I knew about the vaccines and things before they even touched down. Um, I was able to have open conversations about our communities to people who might have overlooked them. I've been able to open up doors for people from HBCUs to come in and do internships and um actually have their hands in places that they normally would not have been chosen for. You know, when COVID first hit and they needed scientists, they were trying to get them from places like Georgetown and GW. We know we're there, but not all of us are there. A lot of us are where? Howard. A lot of us are at Morgan. I literally sat in a meeting in this cultural committee and I raised my hand. I said, well, why don't we go grab some people from Howard? So open up the door for us to bring in four chemists from Howard University. Wow. That's that's major. That's major. And the fact that they probably wouldn't have even done that and you helped them get on, that's 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 huge, you know? I mean, an intern is one an internship is one of those things especially now so valuable. So valuable having that experience even sometimes trumps the education itself. So it does. You know, that's, that's, that's keys. And you know, the person that found um, what was needed for the vaccines was actually a black woman. I'm not surprised. A black woman, right. But you don't see a lot of publicity about her. You don't see a lot of conversation about her. You just see the big department heads of these hospitals and these, di di these different companies that come out and speak. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's a fact. So let's, I want to talk, I want to talk more about how you manage all of this, right? For, for those of you who, who are just tuning in, who may have missed the beginning intro, um, Miss, Miss Liberty Cheney. Did I say that right? Don't call me Miss. You make me feel old. <laughs> um, I'm from the South. I can't help it. That's what we do. Okay. You're just a gentleman. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Um, this young lady is a jack. She is a masterful, uh, just, just, she's a doer. Let me just say that. She's a doer. She doesn't talk about what she's going to do. She does it. And then she, you'll see the results at the end. So not only is she a pastor, not only is she a mother of four, not only is she a, what do you say, a cultural ethic hacker? Coach, what is <laughs> An ethical hacker. <laughs> An ethical hacker for NIH, she is a, a just beautiful mind and she's very community oriented. And so my question is um, something that a lot of people struggle with, especially when they're getting started and whether it be a new job or new business is, is time management. Mm -hmm. um, can you just kind of touch on how you're able to keep all the balls in the air, especially knowing that you have younger kids as well? 
Well, my children are involved. That's the key thing. My children are entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. My children get paid off of this, you know. I told you about my publishing company, a Harvard House Publishing. My daughter, who is a college student who needs her tuition paid at a private college, she is the um, editor. So she makes money. Um, some of the things that I do for ministry because I have a presence um, on social media that requires me to have music and different things. My son produces the music. He does all of my mm -hmm. audio visual. Um, so my children are heavily involved in all of the entrepreneurship and they also have a stream of income and outside of my children i have been entrusted with te a team i have a team of individuals who have the same mindset and they're creative as well and they have submitted their gifts to assist me so i have people that help me market i have people who might pick somebody up from a football game if need be but i have a community that assists me with this assignment and most importantly God just gives me strength to make it happen. Amen. Amen. I want to I want to unpack that a little bit too um because uh I think that that's the that's that's the th the thread line in every successful person is the they have a community of people to support them. They have someone that's able to pick up on where they may not be so strong on so when it comes to building a community of people that are supporting you, um, what are some of the common uh, themes or personalities that you tend to look for when going about acquiring those people in your circle? Honestly, I look for people who want to be on a team because in our community, a lot of times we're taught that if you're on a team, somebody's going to eat more than you. I'm looking for people that want to equally split whatever comes to the table so that everybody can eat. I look for team players. I look for people who are willing and able to learn. I look for people that will think outside of the box and go in a direction that maybe they might have been afraid to go in if they didn't have other people to assist them. So I look for people who are kind of like me. They will just jump into it if they know they at least have a little chance of swimming. I'm I'm radical with mine. If I get an idea, I move. If I get a thought, I move. If something looks like it might can work, I move. I don't operate in fear. So I look for people who are the same way. And also, I look for people who are greater than myself, mm. more educated, um, more doors. I, I want someone who has done it better than me because then they can pull me and assist me with it. I look for a person that might not see everything I see in them and look at them as like, you know what? I can hand this off to them. They'll run with it if I give it to them. So those are the type of people I look for. I want to, I want to, I want to hone in on that as well. Um, you just, you just set me up for some good, really good questions. Um, Cause one thing that I, I've noticed in, in our community, especially um, is just sometimes we, we find it hard to ask for help. Even when we know we need it. Right. It could be within arm's length. It could be someone that we know that knows exactly what we need to do. But mm -hmm. rather than ask for help, we'd rather go on YouTube or try it ourselves and end up just going, spinning our spinning our wheels, not going anywhere. So I really want, I really would like you to talk about how does one move from that mindset of I'm not going to ask for help to, all right, I'm, I'm in a receptive mode. I know I need help. And I know that, I mean, it doesn't have to be just business. It could be spiritual, but how, how does one go to maneuver to that mindset shift? I'm going to tell you, I was very prideful and I struggled with asking for help as well. But the moment I came to the realization of saying, this is how people view me. I'm expected to fail. I'm expected not to know. And I have more against me than for me. Once I came to the realization that that was a factual place, I said, look, I have to prove to the world that I will not be what they want me to be. And if I have to humble myself to tell someone I do not know, then I'm going to do it because I'd rather have more wins than failures trying to, trying to hide the fact that I don't know something, you know, because mm -hmm. um, even with my job, I'll give you an example. When I first got there, okay, I'm an educated person. I have a doctorate degree. Um, this, this man said to me, he said, 
He said, how do you do this job? Are you going to school for it? I was like, no, nah, I've already been to school. But he automatically assumed that I didn't have the education for my job because I was a black woman. Right. For a little while, I started being afraid to say I did not know something or ask for help. But then mm -hmm. I started making some critical mistakes. So then I said, okay, I understand these people don't think I know. I understand they don't really want me here. Now I have to humble myself to find those doors I can go into and ask the right people. I have to find out how to be approachable. I have to find out how to smile a little harder, how to be a little nicer, because I have to as a Black woman. So that's how I did it. I realized how to use who and what I was to open up the doors that were needed. And I accepted the fact and understood and acknowledged the fact that people didn't see me um, properly. So sometimes you just got to own up to it. This is what it is. Get over that and then go into the doors that are necessary so you can get the help that you need. Mm. Mm. Some people, some people might, might hear that and they hear you, you know, you smile a little harder and you, you know, did a little bit of that and they may feel some type of way like, oh, I don't want to be outside of myself. I don't want to sell myself out or anything like that, you know, so, but you're saying that you need to be uh, in a place of understanding and be real, right? Be you real. Be real. Or and what because when people see me as a black woman and that's the type of society I have to work in, they automatically see anger. They all automatically see a stereotype. So it, it sucks, but I have to smile harder. I, ha I have to put on my queen status all the time. I could never let my crown shift because I'm looked upon as less than no matter what. So I do have to smile more. I do have to, 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 to speak a certain way, to walk in a certain door. And then what I understand is that once I get in that door, I can own it. What I understand is if I can get into that door, I can bring somebody else that can own it. I just have to know how to get in there first. Because like I said, they see us as angry. They see us as uneducated. Like this man, dude, I signed your paycheck. How do you think I need an education outside of what I might already have? But it's just automatically perceived to be that way because my skin is black, you know? So it's a little, dip, a little extra that we have to put on. Um, I, I read this thing one time and it was talking about a black woman. They said that black women always, they look mean, they look upset. Um, and further in the article, it said a lot of black women are this way because they've had to smile when they didn't want to smile. They've been through so much oppression. They've been through so much pain. So we have this exterior sometimes that some people want to shut doors on us. But when we get to the point where we understand how to work our way into those doors, then we can we can get into places because like I said where I'm at I'm not supposed to be there per their mm -hmm. standards but I smiled a little bit I was honest about things I might not have known and then I was blessed I was poured into and then I was able to access what was needed to be successful man you know I know we are talking about my products but I just feel like I feel like it's somebody out there that needs to know that despite how you look on the outside you still have a responsibility to exude what's on the inside so that people can take down those barriers of what they feel about you it's somebody that's bound in that because of how they look on the outside yeah. mm. wow so that's that's uh you're dropping gems right now i want to make sure that people um if you have if you have a question for liberty of honeycomb cosmetics please make sure you uh go ahead and put it in the question box um i would just want to i want to continue just to dive in a little bit more about your actual the business itself right mm -hmm. yeah. um what is something that you wish that you knew when you started that you had to learn along the way what would you what advice would you give yourself when you first started? that you didn't know now um i would say the copywriting part because mm -hmm. um i should have waited before i started copywriting certain things because as i evolved i started spending more money because i had to get this copyrighted i had to get that copyrighted 
I should have taken my time, but I was so zealous. I was so hype. I'm like, oh my God, this person had a bald spot. Let's use it. I'm going to get a copyright on this. And then I would do a little bit more research because I had to become a chemist. I would do a little bit more research and there were other things that I needed to add, but I should have taken my time when it came to like some of my formulas before I went and got the copyrights because I spent some money, money. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, and this sounds, this sounds like um, something that my last guest had had a struggle with just in a different form. So he has a clothing line mm -hmm. and what he found out that he ended up spending a lot more money than he really needed to. And in the beginning, right, versus at actually doing the research and realizing, because he started with a podcast and he ended up getting all this equipment and whatnot. And, you know, there was ways that he could have started smaller mm -hmm. and then scaled up had he done the initial research. So right. it seems like it kind of goes back to that whole uh, quote. I don't I don't want to say who, who said it because I'm going I'm to be wrong and be like, oh, no, that's not who said it. But it's either George Washington or Ben Franklin or one of them old white dudes. But... <laughs> They basically had, they basically, um, he, had a, he has a quote that says, uh, you know, if I'm given four hours to chop down a tree, I would spend the first three hours sharpening my ax. Mm -hmm. And that's just basically, to me, that's just the summary of how important it is to properly prepare for whatever mission that you have, whether that be your business, your job, your life, your family, you know, it takes time to properly prepare before you just jump in. And that can save you some, some time on the back end. Oh, yeah. And see, with me, I was just excited. When I figured out the sh how to make shampoos and different things for your hair, I went in. I mean, I was trying to make 50 million things. And I'm like, wait a minute. I have to slow up because I have to perfect one before I get to the next. So I had shampoo and conditioner, leave-in conditioner, hair mask. Um, hair souffles then I went to body butters then I went to um, sugar scrubs and then I'm like oh my god my sugar scrubs are lacking because I haven't put in work over here I've been focusing on making this and that like I just needed to slow down and I let people that ask me do you have this it didn't mean you need to have it they just wanted to know but because they asked I'm like I gotta create it you know so that's where I made a big mistake so then I sat back and I'm like oh my god I started off trying to make three things now I have 20 things. Now I have to perfect these 20 things. And this formula isn't right. That one isn't right. I need to scale back on this. I need to add more of that. So I wasted money doing that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So right now, um, we're in a, obviously we're still in the pandemic. It's about a year, a year deep into the pandemic. Um, how has COVID-19 affected your business? Man, it was the best thing that could have happened to me. <laughs> it, it was good. I mean, I'll be honest. COVID-19 has made it to where people are like, you know, if I don't have to make this trip and she can just send me this and I know that I'm good, then I want it, you know. And it also made it to where I kept my little hind parts in the house. Because if I was at work, I couldn't have never done any of this you know so COVID-19 actually gave me time to be in the lab it also um opened up a whole nother level of clientele absolutely so would you say so COVID-19 has been a big has really helped you and I have seen that in a lot of businesses um as far as resources, were you able to get any loans or any anything, any PPP? What, what, what's going on with that? So, and I'm going to be 100% honest with you. When I helped one specific person, I'm going to tell their story one day. When I helped one specific person who had experienced an issue with cancer and they had lost the middle part of their hair, when I was able to help them grow their hair back, they became an investor mm -hmm. in my company. So I did not have to take out any loans. They invested so much to where I was able to buy a lot of products and I was able to get everything that I have copywritten. So I didn't have to do that because I helped somebody. And that was somebody that I helped for free. I used that person. I'm like, how does this feel on your hair? What is this doing? You know, I spent time with them. I actually, 
I cared about their situation. It wasn't, hey, let me hand you this oil right here. Good luck. It was, what is happening with your hair? How does it make you feel? I actually took an interest in them. And when I took that interest, they took an interest in what I'm doing right now. That's so, so powerful because I I actually, we actually share a lot of the same principles. You know, I, I, I honestly believe, I'm a believer of a law of attraction personally. Um, but I, I believe that a lot of my success is directly a result of me just putting others before me, right? And, and even with this platform, you know, my goal has been and still is just to give other people as much exposure because ultimately I know that the more people I influence and the more people that I help, you know, the law is that- It's coming back. Like until itself is drawn. So it's gonna come back and it, and it has. I haven't had to worry about, you know, I, I personally I'm so grateful I haven't had to clock in in over three years. You know, I've been able to just have multiple streams and, and live a comfortable life that I'm extremely grateful for. So. I really, I really hope people are, are are taking heed on that because it goes against the American way, so to speak, of me, 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 and it's more of a we, we, we. And when we do that collaboration, it's it opens up so much. I'm just you never know who you're gonna bump into when you just do right by a person. Like simply care, you know, simply care. I mean, come on, you gotta start. You have a small business. You're just now starting. You can't act as if the people don't matter. Your business will not succeed if the people don't matter to you. So even on my website, people will buy things. I might not even know them, but because it was a certain product that they bought, I might send a message. Hey, I'm checking on you in reference to the hair mask that you received. How is it working on your hair? I've had people come back and say, this has been wonderful. And just because I reached out, they liked that. So then they bought more. They introduced somebody else to it just because I simply showed an act of love. I care. I want to know. I want to help you, you know? It's major. Underrated. Underrated. It is very underrated. People think, hey, I, I know this and I know that. I'm a super benefit to you. No, let the people benefit you as well. They're the ones with the money. <laughs> big facts. Yeah. Big facts. So um, right now, are there any, have you, let me say, have you read or listened to anything inspirational recently that you would like to share? Well, you know, I'm a church lady, so <laughs> that's kind of where I, I, I stay, you know, I stay in those areas. But with me, with me doing honeycomb and I'm reaching out to other entrepreneurs, I ran into this guy, when was it last week sometime? And it was like this little shop over by the post office where I take all my products daily. So I go into this shop and it was, it was the first time I seen the lights on and I walked in and the brother was standing in there. I was like, Hey, what's up? I mean, is this black owned? He was like, dang, you kind of bold. I said, yeah, I am. He said, yeah, this is black owned. I was like, okay, well let me buy $200 worth of whatever this is. He was like, you don't even know what I'm selling. I was like, what is it? He was like, I'm selling cake. I was like, I want $200 worth of cake. And he yes. broke down and he started crying. He said, in the midst of this pandemic, I've almost lost this building. And he wow. said, it's so slow and nothing is working in, in here. So I gave him a tip. I put a tip in a jar. And then he started telling me his story. He told mm -hmm. me that he started the business when his wife died, him and his son. It was something literally for them to do. And he said, the reason why he kept pushing in the midst of the pandemic was because it reminded him of his wife and his wife, his wife kept having him push. So that truly, truly inspired me. It wasn't something I read. It was something I bumped into, but it was funny because the moment I did that for him, or, I mean, he blessed me, I got cake. So it wasn't just for him, it was for us both. But the moment I did that for him, I went and I refreshed on my website and everything that I gave him, I got back instantly. Mm. And, taught me that principle of what you just said, you know, and the Bible I read says, you st what you reap, what you sow, you will reap, you know, and I saw that it was reaping season because I was able to pour into him. So that's one of the major things that has really blessed me most recently is how to pour into other people so that they have the, the means to pour into our community. Ooh. So they say, fill your cup up first, right? Come on, and then pour, 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 pour. 
<laughs> Boy. So um I got so many uh, man, I just I I'm person, I just love to ask questions. I'm a just I'm the same way. Sponge. <laughs> What advice would you give someone looking to get started specifically in your industry? What what would you tell someone just get started? Don't just sit back on YouTube. Okay. <laughs> get yourself some preservative. <laughs> Start understanding the products. Okay. Start understanding the ingredients because I think a lot of people just get on YouTube they pick what they see on YouTube, but they don't know the health benefits of them, of the of the ingredients. They just put it in something and say, oh, use it. You need to be able to explain your stuff. You know, okay, you have rice water or rice oil. What does that do? You put chebe powder in your products. What does that do? You use omelet. What does that do? What does aloe do? You have to understand what you are using and how it is beneficial to your customer. And another thing I would say, use it. Um, I have people that I know who are in the same industry, but they don't use their own product. Use your product. Sell your brand by your own results. My house, we don't use any other soap. We don't use, we don't use any other shampoo. If I see somebody with some eco gel, they got to get out. You better use this edge control mama made. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, no excuses. So, so no excuses. Talk a little bit more about the the um the products that you have. I know I know you have um you know obviously like the hair care, but you you have a few other products as well. Can you kind of touch on those? And if you have any, can we see? Yes, I'll show you some of my products. So I love soaps. So I have soaps, all natural soaps. This this soap right here, this is made with pure honey. So I have pure honey in this, and I also have like shea butters, I have oatmeal, all of that is infused into this bar. And this is really, really, really good for your face. Okay, ladies, if you're wearing all this makeup, I'm not knocking it because if you slayed and beat and you look good, I'm with it. But this is good for your skin. It will exfoliate your skin. It will take off all that gook and unclog your pores so that you look good. And then you're going to smell edible. So when you get in the bed with your man, he going to want to bite you because you smell good. <laughs> oh. uh, I have a lot of whip body butters i mean a lot of different ones but here's um one of my whip body butters this one right here this is apple crisp mm. i know it's red but it's apple <laughs> it's a red apple and look at that look how good that looks like i just want to log off and put this lotion on myself right about now <sighs> all natural come on you will want to eat this but this is really good for your skin i also have something for if you have eczema um it's called milk and honey it's really good on your skin. I had a, a child. He was about, I think, 11 or 12. And his mother said, my baby has eczema. So I created that with body butter ex ex exclusively for him. But then I was like, I like it. So then I put it um, on, my, um, on my website. But I have stuff for eczema. I also have um, charcoal bath bombs. I have charcoal mm. massage bars. I have milk and honey massage bars. Also for the men. I have beard bars. Let's go. Let's go. And they feel good. They, they smell good. I put um, what I would want my man to smell like up in here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it also grows the beard and it gets out those little kinks and, and, and bumps. I also have beard oil. I have lock oil. Um, I also have white rice oil. Black women, stop putting white rice water in your hair. Your hair is stinking because of that. But I have white rice oil. Does not allow your hair to stink. We have peppermint, all kinds of stuff in here that helps with itching, um, the inflammation in the scalp. I have something called black rice oil, which um, grows your hair. It makes your hair thick. I have something else called liquid gold hair growth serum, which I created. It has chebe powder, which comes from Chad, Africa. Sisters use this in their hair. Um, their hair is all the way down to their high parts. It does work. So I use that. And that oil, I also have leave-in conditioners. Um, you can see my hair is nice and slick and up. I use this leave-in conditioner. I laid my edges with this bad boy. Yes. You know, I, I laid my edges. I have my shampoo and my conditioner. Handmade chebe powder is also in here. All of this stuff is, is fire. This is what I use. And I also have a hair mask, which is made 
out of the Cheve powder. Um, it has actual roses in it. I crush up rose petals, um, rose hip. Um, I'm not telling y'all all my ingredients. I'm not telling y'all everything. I have Cheve powder in there, Amla powder as well. The only thing in my products that is not natural is a preservative because it is, le it is mandatory and mm. I have to do it legally. So I have a preservative in all my products so that you don't have mold in your hair. Um, I also do sugar scrubs. Ladies, y'all about to have y'all feet out. <laughs> my God, <laughs> y'all need this. Put this on those feet, get that pumice stone, or you can rub this all over your body and exfoliate. That works. I also do body wash. This is good for us, y'all. No alcohol, nothing in here. And and for the ladies, if you do, if you have issues with yeast infections, this will help you. Okay? This will help you, sis. Stop putting all those chemicals down there and get you some all natural. Mm. And last, my claim to fame, my favorite thing, shampoo bars. So these shampoo bars smell like cocoa and you rub them in your hair. They have my hair growth ingredient, which is Cheve powder. I'm not ashamed to tell y'all that. I'm not scared because you're not going to mix it like me. But Cheve powder is in here and you use this to grow your hair and keep it clean and nice. And if you don't want to grow your hair long, then using my products, just cut it because your hair will grow. Okay. So that's it. <laughs> Yo. Oh, she was, red. I did, and the crazy thing is, uh, y'all watching, I did not even know she had any products. I did not tell her to be ready with her products. Oh, I don't play. She, <laughs> she was beyond prepared. Oh, I do have face wash, too. I have charcoal face wash for us. Boom, I'm done. I, that's, I got it. Oh, what, oh what one, more, you have? one more thing. Turmeric balm for your skin. Dark spots, if you've been smoking and your lips are dark, I have something to heal all of that. Wow. So you tapped into the dark target audience and all that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> for my weed smokers, I got some for y'all too. That's them lips. <laughs> about. So let's get into, uh, let's see. We, I think we got a question in the question box. If you have a question, go ahead, drop it in the question box. We're going to go through the um, comments in a second. So put this up for you. says, how do you go about pitching an innovative idea in cosmetics but are not a chemist? Queen, you are Black. You are a chemist. We're chemists in the kitchen. We're chemists in our household. We're chemists when we have coins for stuff or we don't have coins for stuff and we got to make something happen. You're already a chemist. Thanks. All you have to do is do your research. Ask someone. You can ask me. I had to ask someone. I had to actually ask some chemists <laughs> some questions. So you can pitch your products and you can be innovative by coming up with surely an idea. Come up with the idea. Once you come up with the idea, think in your mind, what do I think need to go, needs to go into this to make it happen? Start researching those things that you think need to go into that product. And once you begin to research them, you're going to find out what needs to go into that product. That's how I had to do it. Shampoo took me forever. I'm like, how do I make all natural shampoo when everywhere I go, I keep seeing glycerin and all this stuff everywhere. So I started thinking, what do I think shampoo should look like? Started doing my research. And then I found the proper chemicals that were all natural to create my shampoo. Mm. Okay. So hopefully Queen Shells, that answers your question. And um, I can help you, Queen. <laughs> We have assistance right here. So, and that's a perfect example of asking for help, mm -hmm. right? You never know who's going to help or who's, you know, you, what's the worst that's going to happen if you ask? Say no. Or pay me. That's, that's not in that bag because you get it in the back end. Yeah. All right. That's a great question. Let's see. Um, okay. So someone says, Hair by Shamila, she goes, I would love to carry your products in my store. I have a Black-owned beauty supply. Oh, I would love that. Thank you. Thank yes. You. Yes. So we're going to go ahead and make that contact, Shamila. My bad. 
plug. I, I had clicked out on accident. Um, but yeah, let's make that connection. If you haven't already DM'd uh, Miss Liberty, go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to make that connection. Somebody says, but why settle for a comfortable life? You know, my whole life I want to be comfortable. Is it bad to want more? No, it's not mm. bad to want more. You should always want more. Um, the sky's mm. the limit. Like, think about it. Look how big just the United States of America is. You know, look how big the world is. Never limit yourself, you know, and don't let anyone make you feel like you need to limit yourself. I was in a situation some years ago and, and the person said to me, I just don't like dealing with you because you just want too much. I said, I want the world. <laughs> I want every inch of this world if it's obtainable for me. It's nothing wrong with wanting more because when you want more, you'll do more. When you do more, you will obtain more. And there's nothing wrong with having everything. You can have everything if you want it. Mm. That's it. That's it. And you take action like, you, like you've been saying this whole time. Get up and make a move. Right. Get up and make a move. Put that pen to paper, but also get to walk in it. Don't be afraid ask for help don't be afraid so let's see if we have any more questions oh she said i had a phone call please repeat queen shell with the um she had the question about she's not a chemist um what would you what would you advise what advice would you give someone who's not a chemist to to pitch their idea so i'll just give you a visual okay so Queen Shell, when, when, when I first came up with this product, this was the first product I ever came up with. This is rice oil. I kept seeing people put this rice water in their hair. So I put some rice water in a, in a little bowl. I was going to do this little thing that I saw. And I was like, man, this, this joint stinks. Like, I'm not putting that in my hair. <laughs> this stinks after two days. So then I was like, well, what, do, what am I looking? What is my end result? Okay, this thing stinks, but I know there's something good that comes out of the rice. What can I do so that the rice does not stink? What can I add to it? And once I started looking into that, I started researching it. And then I found out, oh, okay, add this, take away that. And that's how I was able to create this product without being a chemist. But now that I'm at the place that I'm at now with, um, you know, getting things copyrighted and having a patent on it, I do have someone who is a chemist that will tell me legally what I can and what I cannot put on a shelf. Mm. Yeah. So, so I had to make that move. <laughs> you had to make the move, but you didn't need that move to start. I didn't need that move to start. I was my own chemist. I'm still 90% my own chemist. It's just right. that when people want me to put stuff in stores, I have to I have to make sure that I'm right because the last thing I want to do is someone get something and it molded or, you know, mm -hmm. I need to know the laws. Like there's a law to, for me to put this on a shelf. I have to have the shelf life written on my label. This is 12 months. There is a symbol that is FDA approved that I put on here that lets someone know that it's only 12 months on the shelf. If I don't put that on there in month 13, you have mold in your stuff, you might come to me and try to sue me, you know? So once you get started though, you need to make sure you know the legalities behind your stuff. Get your LLC, you know, get a mentor, um, ask for help because trust me, I've made some stuff and sat it in a bowl for a little while and looked and was like, well, this thing's starting to look like cottage cheese. What is this? And I had yeah. to ask for help. Ask for help. Yeah. And yeah, that's, I just, I just want to say, you know, I, I really appreciate your transparency and your, and your guidance. And, and not only that, just not even just taking the time to speak with the, our community today, but what you're doing in real life, so to speak, you know, we were actually going out and making these differences and helping people that may, you know, say like at one point you mentioned that you were working with people who had cancer and, you know, obviously that's, that's extremely commendable. And I, I really just want to say thank you for your time. Um, is there any final remarks that you would like to leave uh, our community with today? Um, I want to say first and foremost, thank you so much for giving me the opportunity to speak on your platform and to introduce not only my products, but to also introduce my heart and my personality to the people that are connected to you. So I want to say thank you. 
I also want to say to our community, buy and support Black. You don't have to buy my stuff because my Black behind going to sell to somebody else's Black behind somehow, some way. But buy and support Black businesses because when you do that, you show confidence in who you are and you help and build a step and establish things for yourself. Absolutely, absolutely. Black on all day. So we got one more question. Let's uh one more question for you. Let's see. One of a kind Kai has a question. We got you, Kai. She says, oh. I started business last I think it's meant to say last year during the pandemic. How do I make it legit? I wanna tell you, start off right now, go get yourself an EIN number. That's the lowest level thing that you can do, and that is free ninety nine, free. Get yourself an EIN number. Um, the second thing after that, you need to trademark your name. Register your name with the state. Get your LLC. That is the best way to protect yourselves because I'm going to tell you now, people like to sue folks. When I first started my business, somebody tried to sue me or attempted to, but I had my papers and all my ducks in a row. I was like, sis, go forth. Only thing they did was market my brand. So, Get yourself uh, an EIN number. Um, if you message me, I can tell you where you can get an EIN. I can actually send you the link. It's a website you can go to, um, and you can get your EIN number tonight for free. I believe it's irs.gov. Mm -hmm. It is irs.gov, but I want to send the link because mm -hmm. there's another one that's not really the link, and they try to charge you. Mm. Yeah. See, she got the she got the cheat codes, man. <laughs> got cheat codes. Okay, she got. Oh, uh, she said, "Where's the first step?" Um, one of a kind, Kai. If you want, uh, like like she said, um, do you mind if she reaches out to you? Oh, that's fine. Okay, yeah. So um, you can read. You can make sure you follow her. Don't just get some information and bounce. You know, make sure you at least give her a follow. Support the page, support the movement. If you can check out my website. <laughs> website is beautiful. Check out her website. Check out the, the 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 scrubs. Check out all her beautiful products that she just wonderfully displayed. <laughs> the hair scrub. <laughs> Get your edges right. I'm gonna need something for my beard. I've been trying you, to. You look. This one is for you. This one is for yeah. you. Right here. Yeah, yeah I need my that. website is www.honeycombcosmetics.org. Honeycombcosmetics.org. Y'all, yes. please support. We got someone. Y'all got to support this. She's All doing... natural, handmade, made with love, y'all. Made, made with love. Made with love. By a black queen at that, so By you know. By a black queen. <laughs> <laughs> you know it's legit. You know it's legit. So for everybody that tuned in, thank you, thank you, thank you for checking us out on a Small Business Saturday. We'll be giving businesses exposure from around the world. So if you are interested in being featured on our platform, please shoot us a DM. Miss Liberty, thank you again. Thank so you. Much. It is my pleasure to have you, and I look forward to doing this again one day, one day very soon. Thank you. My pleasure. Have a good night. You too. All right.